Hello everyone in Cyber World. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Richard, and this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. Okay, Longer uh, provided us with an accessory to go along with our Longer Ray 5 uh, laser. And uh, this particular accessory is to allow you to engrave uh, cylindrical items. And we're gonna show you how we did that. So let's get right into it. This is the roller that I'm going to be uh, attaching and reviewing to my attaching to the Longer Ray 5 uh, 20 watt laser. Um, all this does is this roller spins cylindrical items and allows you to engrave something like this and it rolls it for you as the laser head goes across the top and engraves for you. All right, now to explain how this works. This actually uh, can be adjusted. It's adjusted based on the, the diameter or the circumference of the item that you're actually going to be engraving. And uh, in the user's manual, we'll go ahead and show you that in a bit. The user's manual tells you which number to use. And if you could tell here on the back, there's numbers. And so based on the diameter, when you measure it, uh, it tells you which one to set it to. Changing the setting is quite easy. First thing I do is loosen up this. It's just uh, an adjusting tightening band. And this part here is what gets moved. Uh, there's washers on each side of this, and I find that every time you go to lift it, if you don't be careful, the washers get hooked, they get stuck, and so it doesn't come up properly, but it's not a big deal. All right, so once you have this lifted up, you can adjust it into a different slot uh, for, the, uh, for something that might be a little more narrow, let's say. Okay, so you tighten it up, and then, Pull this out here and get a nice tight fit here as well. And all that does is it gives it tension so that the two are connected and they move together. Okay, uh, when you go to connect this, this will be uh, connected here and we'll get into a little bit more details uh, on, as we explain how this is connected uh, using an extension cable that, is, that comes with the roller itself. Okay, this is uh, just quickly throwing this together. The uh, actual roller is on the inside of the uh, longer Ray 5 laser here. Um, but as you can tell, if I want to engrave something such as this here, if we were to put this on, the laser isn't going to sit on top of this to be able to engrave. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put some things under the legs to lift this up so that the laser head is high enough to uh, be able to engrave. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to connect this because I actually got a little confused there for a slight second. So uh, hopefully we can make some sense here for you and help you out so you don't go through the same issues. Okay, the laser here has an actual connection on the Y axis. The rollers come with a spare cable, although I couldn't figure out from which one of the power cables that they had or the electrical cables was going to attach to the roller, you really had to read the instructions, which I probably didn't do so well the first time around. It actually tells you that you have to disconnect the Y axis cable here. What you're gonna do then is connect it to this extension cable like such and you're going to take this end of the extension cable and you're going to plug it into the roller the reason is once we've actually connected this up to our, our computer and we tell it to start engraving a cylindrical item the only thing that's going to move is the x-axis it's going to be going back and forth like this the rollers themselves will be turning it on the y-axis so you don't need to be connected up to uh, the y-axis of the uh, the laser itself Again, I thought that was a little confusing at first, but uh, it, it made sense. So anyhow, we're, we're gonna go ahead and show you exactly where this cable then goes to on the roller. All right, now this uh, extension cable that I showed before actually just simply goes into the top of the roller and plugs in just as if it was on the eye axis on the laser machine itself. Okay, this recording here has been done after I've completed a lot of the work, but it's something that I discovered 
after the fact that I think is real important that I need to discuss. The company provides a very good instruction manual on the settings that you have to do with light burn in order for the roller to work. The instructions worked fantastic. So what I have to say here isn't to say that the product is a problem, but I think there's something that they probably should include in the instructions because it turned out to be quite painful to me. The instructions have some very detailed places where you make some, some unique settings changes uh, within Lightburn. I assume that these changes were going to be so that anytime you use the roller, you can turn on the, the settings for the ro uh, roller. And uh, when you're done with it, you turn off the settings on the roller and it defa everything else defaults back to the normal printing. What I learned, unfortunately, is that these settings actually make changes to your Lightburn software. And when you go to actually start re-cutting uh, and engraving and stuff like that, everything was off. Uh, I was actually trying to cut a square piece and it kept coming out like half the size uh, lengthwise than it was widthwise and it shouldn't have done that. I uninstalled the software. I tried cleaning out the registry. I couldn't figure out what it was. I rebooted over and over and it still wouldn't work. After some thinking, I should have thought about it early, I realized maybe it has something to do with those settings that I did uh, during the roller setups. And it turns out it actually is. The settings in here tell you that you need to make some changes to the y-axis settings and it tells you what you need to set it to in order for the roller work. I think what is really critical that the company should put in here is that you should annotate what your settings were before you change them to the roller because once you're done using the rollers when you want to go back you have to put those same settings numbers in there for it to work. I have now been working on it I've been putting in different numbers trying to recalibrate it and I'm a little bit off uh, I finally got it close to square again but it's it's just like a fraction of a millimeter off and that that kind of still bugs me because I want something square to be square trying to go back to the original setting which I did not uh, write down it was something that I wish that uh, they had uh, mentioned uh, in advance again this is not saying that the product is bad it's not even saying that the instructions are incorrect for setting up the roller I'm just saying that it would be very very important that you annotate what your default settings are before you make any changes because I wasn't able to find a say, uh, way to go back to the original uh, settings. With that, let's carry on. I have some uh, bamboo wood uh, cups and I figured, you know, instead of engraving, everybody does engraving, but why can't I use the, the laser to cut out patterns in it and make something nice with that? So I'm actually going to cut instead of engrave. Now, there's a little problem when doing that. Uh, this is just a sample. I'm not actually going to be using this. Um, when you cut through the wood, the laser will continue through and touch the bottom. Now, because it's so far away from the ideal focal point, it's not actually going to go all the way through however it can it's still strong enough where it can scorch and burn uh, oh hey lights back on uh, and anyhow it can and still burn on the bottom side and uh, leave some really bad burns and scorches on the inside which I wanted to avoid so I wanted to figure out what can I do to prevent that from happening the idea that I had was to use aluminum foil so the concept here was to put some aluminum foil on the bottom side here so that when it cuts over on the top it goes down reflects off the aluminum foil and it doesn't burn the bottom of the wood sounds good but now the only problem with this is you can only do a couple patterns on the top at a time and you have to roll it and then move the aluminum foil on the bottom side so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't burn I could put aluminum all the way around on the inside, but the problem then is when the laser goes through, it's gonna hit the aluminum and reflect right back up. Then you have a problem with uh, scorching once again in there. So I had to find a way to put something in here to keep reflecting so that it was uh, good the entire time. And what I came up with is the use of a toilet paper roll. So here's how we actually did this. Took a simple bit of Aluminum foil, tin foil, as some of you call it. All right, wrapped it up and stuffed the edges. Really, really simple. Now, this is the this is the fun part. I don't know how I came up with this. It's a real simple concept, but all you do, put it inside and let it sit in there. 
as the roller rolls this, as it's uh, doing different parts of this cup, the aluminum on the bottom, the roller stays on the bottom, regardless how it rolls, and so there's always aluminum on the bottom side of it to reflect and prevent burning all the way through. So uh, we're going to show you some clips of when I actually did it. Actually had the wood, had the, had the roller with the aluminum foil that's inside there. Uh, now let's go ahead and show you how that came out. We are thrilled and very thankful that Longer provided us with this roller. It could be used to produce many items in the future. I too would like to thank Longer for entrusting us uh, to review all their products. Uh, so far, have you've seen the laser itself, we've done the air assist, we have the roller here, and uh, we plan on doing some more videos. Uh, but for next week, <laughs> <laughs> it has gotten so busy lately, we're not sure what's going to be next. So until we meet again. Bye-bye.